In these problems, we are looking at measures of central tendency. And that's just a fancy phrase to refer to things you probably know about already, the mean, the median, and the mode. And those three M words are ways of looking at groups of numbers uh, to see how much they bunch up around some central value. That's what central tendency means. So the mean, you might also know that as the average. You add everything together, and then you divide by the number of numbers that you have. With the median, you just line everything up from lowest to highest and pick out the middle value. Or if you've got an even number of points, you have to take the average of the two middle values. And the mode is just looking for the number that shows up the most often in a group. So let's look at some problems uh, with these ideas. The first one says, for the first three sets of numbers below, the value of x represents the same type of measure of central tendency. OK, so for this set of data, this x is either the mean, the median, or the mode. Uh, same with this, same with this. And for this one, it looks like uh, find the value of x for the fourth set of numbers. So we have to figure out what's going on here, get this 25, 18, and 14, and do the same thing to find this value of x for the fourth set of data. So first of all, I think we can rule out mode because um, this set of data, uh, while the 25 appears only once, and in fact, nothing appears more than once, so there isn't a mode here. And in this set of data, there's no 18 appearing at all. So it's definitely not mode. So it's either mean or median. So I think I'll take this set of numbers and add them up. Got my calculator here. So that's 145. And I'm going to divide by the number of numbers divided by 5. So I get 29. That's definitely not 25. So I'm guessing this is the median. And I can verify that by just taking the central number. There's two on the top, two on the bottom. So this is our central number. Aha, so that's our median. Let's see if that works for this one. Here we have an even number of data points, so we have to take the average. And halfway between 16 and 20 is 18. That works. Here the middle value is 14. That works. So we just have to do that for the last set. So I'll cut off two on the top and two on the bottom. So it looks like I have an even number here. So I've got to find, well, I could take the average of 19 and 27. I could add those together and divide by 2. Or I could just do this quickly in my head um, by counting up and down at the same time. So let me show you how the, I do that when numbers are fairly close together. So I'll count up from 19 and down from 27 simultaneously. So up would be 20, down would be 26. Up would be 21, down would be 25. Up would be 22, down would be 24. Up would be 23, and down would be 23. And I land on the same number. That's my answer. So that is the median. And that's answer C. Let's look at a couple more. This next problem says, if Ms. Shields reports student progress using the total test scores divided by the number of tests, which of the following does she report? And we've got our choices here. Uh, you should know that of these three measures of central tendency, the mean, the median, and the mode, it's only the mean that uses division. You add everything up, and then you divide by the number of data points. The median is just plucking out a value from the middle. The mode is looking for the value that occurs the most often. So since we're talking about adding things up and dividing here, we're talking about mean. All right, one more. And this is a little more tricky. So we're going to have to do some thinking about this last one. It says, in a mathematics class, half of the students scored 41 on an achievement test, with the exception of a few students who scored 72. The remaining students scored 44. Which of the following statements is true about the distribution of scores? All right, well, let's, let's think about this. I've got half the students. I'm just going to put a big block here. I don't know how many this is, but they scored a 41. And then I've got another chunk, pretty big chunk, but not quite half, that scored 44. And I've got a few up here who scored 72. All right, and this is the halfway mark right here. So this is half the students on the left and half the students on the right. Now, our choices here are the mean is less than the mode, the mean is less than the median, the mean is greater than the median, and the mean and median are the same. Well, let's think about the mode. The mode is the number that occurs the most often. Half the students got 41, and there's no greater number than that here. 44 is less than half the students. 72 is definitely less than half the students. So this mode has got to be 41. Now, could the mean? be less than the mode? Well, the mean is the average. So we're going to add all this together and divide by the number of, of test scores. We don't know the number, but 
it's got to be higher than 41. 41 is the lowest score. So this is not our answer. Now our other choices, it says the mean is less than the median, the mean is greater than the median, and the mean and median are, are the same. Hmm. So how can we compare those two? Well, first of all, let's try to figure out what the median is. And this diagram, I think, gives us a good start on that. The median, we would line up the, the data points from, uh, from lowest to highest and pick the middle. So in this case, if there's, um, it, it says that there are half the students score 41 and the other half score either 44 or 72. Well, we know there's an even number of data points. So the median, the two middle numbers are going to be 41 from this side of the line and 44 from this side of the line. So our median is going to be halfway between those two. So we actually know what the median is. It's going to be 42.5. So that's our median. Now, what could the mean here be? Well, let's think about it in, in a couple of different ways. Let's say all of these were 44s. What would the median be? Well, it'd be the average between 41 and 44. That is 42.5. But we've got a couple higher scores. That's going to raise the mean. So the mean has got to be higher than the median. So we're going to choose B. The mean is greater than the median. So that is a little bit of work with these measures of central tendency.